right, well, must be working. Hey guys, let's see. Wow, I'm early. 359. Let me see. Let's get this stuff moved around. Ah. So, tiles today. Tiling today. Oh my God, I've got so much stuff pulled out for tiles, you guys. Hi, Ann. <laughs> Yeah, oh my God, I've literally for the last three hours, I've been gathering anything and everything that I've ever used that has to do with tiles. And I'm sure I probably forgot some stuff. Hi, Laura. Hi. <laughs> here I am. I'm right here. Um, yeah, so you guys ready? This might turn out to be sort of a um, lengthy process, you know. I mean, we can't um, really do art tiles in just, you know, a couple hours. It, it's, it's definitely um, a process. There's, you know, multiple um, steps. So, hi, Brenda. <laughs> you made it right on. I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's, you know, there's, there's, um, and obviously, you know, multiples, you know, and, um, so I've got tiles basically in pretty much like every stage of completion, you know, that I can kind of, um, run through and, and show you guys. Um, I thought I would kind of show you some of the tiles that I've made and, um, you know, different ways that I, I use them and different things you can do with them and, um, and then sort of go into things you can use to make tiles. So, um, and then materials, you know, um, generally I use, um, like chipboard. You know, hi Rona, you made it. <laughs> you made it on time. Good job, 401. So really, it's like 301, right? Thank God that you know, um, the interweb understands daylight savings. Because if it was me, if it was up to me to change clocks, they'd be wrong. And for like four months until I finally figure out, you know, how I'm supposed to change them. Hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. <laughs> um, hello. Has anybody ever gone back and looked at any of the, um, recorded live streams on anybody's live stream and just, um, just to see like, if you can, um, see the chat, like I haven't, I haven't looked at that. I'm kind of curious. And yeah, is it in the comments? Is that where the chat is? Hi, Scotty. <laughs> so Brenda, you've got your, your computer at the, um, at the supper table. Nice. Right. Well, it's a special occasion. Hi, Regina. Oh, I didn't even see you. There you are. <laughs> I didn't see your hello before. So you can see it in the comments. Okay. Okay. You can't see live chat, Brenda? Are you on your tablet or? Oh, yeah. Tablet. Huh. That's weird. I can see. There should be a little button you can um, something you can tap to, to show the chat. I know that that's how it is, um, on my phone. There's a little thing that says, um, like live chat up or something like that. Anyway. Oh, you can't go back to, you can't, you can't see it when you go back to watch. Okay. 
Okay. Hi, Grace. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Carla, yes, we can see you. Hi. I can see you now. I can definitely see you now. <clears throat> so, yeah, so this is quite an endeavor, you guys. And to be really honest with you, I've been a little nervous about, um, you know, kind of going down this road again because, um, it, it means getting a lot of stuff out and stuff that I, that I put away. So I just want you to know how special you are that, um, you know, <laughs> anyway, cause the last thing I need are tiles, right? Like I need tiles, like I need a hole in the head, but they're so fun to make and they're just a great way to, um, use up a bunch of stuff, you know? So, so I'll move a little bit of stuff out of the way and then I'll just kind of show you guys some of my tiles, even though, you know, you've probably seen them, and, but, um, I'll just, you know, talk about some different like bases and, um, you know, things that I've made tiles on. So, um, these little guys are done on, um, Hi, Diana. And I'm sorry if I, if I miss, you know, you coming in, but I'm not looking at the chat like real often, but if you are talking to me, definitely make sure and type it all in caps so that, um, I, it ca calls my attention. So, um, if there's too much chat going on, obviously, you know, it's hard to catch the whole thing. So, but anyways, um, so these are made on Scrabble tiles. This was like a special edition uh, Scrabble game, so the tiles were like a dark burgundy color, um, and so I, I really liked them. But um, these mostly started out with like a postage stamp, and then kind of layered up from there. Um, and then, so these are most of my like real small ones in this box, and and some are layered up, and you know have quite a lot going on. Others are a lot more simple. So, um, and then any of the ones that I made, um, that I couldn't like punch a hole through it. I attached like a little, a little hanger so you can hang it off of something. That's kind of what I like to do with my tiles. Of course, you know, you don't have to do that. You can, you can just glue them onto stuff or, you know, whatever, make magnets out of them. Um, anyway, so those are a little teeny guys. Um, these are some older tiles that I made. Um, what size are the little ones? Well, not, they're like a Scrabble tile. So I think they're, excuse me, I think they're like three quarters of an inch square or something like that. But, um, so these are made on, uh, dominoes. And I like to be able to see the, you know, the domino. But, um, so these I made quite a while ago. Um, and again, put some little, little hangers on them. Yes, Regina. Um, I have a lot of tiles. <laughs> I do. I have a lot. Um, Regina and Diana, I should say. I have, yes, I have a lot of tiles. Um, so, you know, I, I see the world in what can I, you know, can I use that in a tile? But when I'm in that mode, you know, um, that's, that's kind of where, where my mind is when I'm, when I'm in tile mode, like, um, you know, don't, don't turn that away. I can use that for tiles. And these ones, um, I actually coated with glossy accents. Um, and as far as, um, as far as glossy accents versus, uh, triple thick, you guys, you, I'm pretty sure you know how I feel about it, <laughs> but, um, I really do feel like they're basically the same. Um, I get it. Okay. The trip, triple thick I get at, um, at Hobby Lobby. That's I, I've never seen it at, at, um, at Michael's, 
Um, I don't see it at Joann's, but I, I do find it at, um, at Hobby Lobby. So if you don't have a Hobby Lobby, then, you know, you might not be able to get it in, in a store, but yes, they definitely have it on, um, on Amazon. And to answer your question, I attached the hangers just with the triple thick. So yeah. Hi Kay. Hi Willow. <laughs> Hi guys. So, so those are done on, um, dominoes and then, <clears throat> so I've got some other things that I've used or that I want to use, um, to make tiles on. And these are just those little, um, bingo, whoops, those little bingo, uh, numbers, you know, um, like markers, you know, and I thought these would be kind of fun to make some little teeny tiny um, tiles on. Yeah, E6000, any kind of like really sturdy type of glue, you know. Yeah, any kind of urethane, um, like a water-based uh, um, coating would, would work. Um, these are, I got these at Hobby Lobby. These are little tiny um, wood circles. They're just wooden circles. Um, so these are, I just painted these with, uh, with liquid leaf and this is not water-based, but I have been able to glue things on top of it and I've never had it, you know, come off. So this is liquid leaf. This is what I use when I want like a really nice metallic, um, coating or whatever. So, um, so there's those and then the little, the little, um, bingo things. I've got some more, um, Scrabble tiles, just the plain ones that I want to use. Um, I've got, you know, just some, um, regular dominoes, tribon tiles. I'm not sure what those are. Okay. Huh. Um, and then I got these, these are just little, these I bought at a store that, um, sells like, um, surplus building materials here in Spokane. And, um, so these are just little pieces of stone that they sell as tile, like to use as tile, like on the countertop or in a bathroom or something. And, um, so these are, these are pretty cool. Got a bunch of those. And this is kind of how those have turned out. Um, just painted them and, you know, nice little paperweight, you know. Um, and these are just all layered up. Not not very dimensional. A lot of my tiles have kind of turned into more dimensional type pieces, you know. These are coated with um, glossy accents. And it's super sturdy, you know. I mean, it basically sounds the same as the stone. Well, pretty much, but, um, and then here's just some larger ones that I made years ago. Some of these are, um, coated with, um, embossing powder on a, you know, because I was just tired of spending so much money on glossy accents and I hadn't found the triple thick yet. So I thought, well, let's try embossing powder and see how that, see how that works, you know, cause I, th I thought that's a cheaper alternative, you know, um, and it does work. This is this. So this one you can see, um, like the texture. So I hadn't figured out to do three or four layers yet. So this one, you know, I used a few layers of embossing powder on that one and that, and that works pretty well, you know, um, and these are just very flat you know, there's not much, uh, dimension to them. So, you know, I just have just tons of them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but here they are. So those are some of the older ones that I've made. Um, and then what to do with them. You know, these are, this is like a newer one. Um, 
these I've made into magnets, just, you know, by the magnet on a roll. And um, I actually had to glue this on with um, super glue because it kept coming off and hot glue wasn't working. And so anyway, these are suit. The magnet is super glued onto this. And the back of this has uh, Inca gold on it. Um, this one obviously does not. But so I made these into magnets. Um, see, that one's kind of lifting up. But yeah, so you can make pins. Um, I've done a bunch of, uh, of pins. Hang on, let me get this stuff out of the way real quick. Um, I put these away. Um, these are those, um, poetry letters, you know, the, the magnets. Um, so I saved out a bunch of these that I thought I could use. Uh, I had a few sets of these and I just don't use them on my refrigerator or whatever. So I thought these would be great to use on tiles, these little words. So, yeah, and it was Corinne's birthday yesterday, you guys. <laughs> Everybody tell her happy birthday. And actually, yesterday was my son's birthday, too. So, so that's basically, you know, some of the weird stuff that you can use or different stuff you can use as bases for, for tiles. Most commonly, um, we're going to use chipboard. Um, and you know, you, <laughs> thanks Corrine. So, you know, you find chipboard everywhere and it does come in different, um, different weights, right? Like, <clears throat> and even some of the thicker stuff is not as sturdy as others, you know, like I, have this is from like a cheap pad of, uh, drawing paper, I think from Hobby Lobby. And it's not as sturdy as some other chipboard. Um, yeah, sometimes it depends on the maker of the chipboard, like how sturdy it is. For example, I don't know where this came from, but this is chipboard too, and it's just about the same thickness, but it's, um, it's just, it's stronger, you know, it's just a lot more sturdy. So I like to use that. And sometimes if I'm using that, um, more flimsy, thicker chipboard, I'll glue two layers together, but I'll tell you what, um, some of the best chipboard, I think, is actually matte board. And, like, um, this is matte board. Um, and I go to, if you guys have um, an art supply store or in your area, um, not necessarily a craft store, but an art supply store, a lot of the time they do custom framing for artists, and they will sell the center cuts of their mat board and, um, mat board tends to be a lot more sturdy too than regular chipboard. So I like to, I like to, um, to use this, especially when I can find the black core where it's black all the way through, you know, it's, there's no, um, it's not just a piece of paper layered on top of the mat board that's colored. It's, it's black all the way through. Yeah. And everybody's saying hi, Steven. Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, um, he cooked bacon this morning and it's nice that we both like bacon, um, super crispy. So everybody else thinks it's burned, but we think it's perfect. So I love that about him. Anywho, so chipboard, um, another thing that I'm sure that we all, 
have in abundance our book covers and these are the, the best I think these are the best chipboard you can get um, because they are super sturdy and you can cut these you know um, I cut them all the time on my on my uh, paper trimmer so if you have a rotary cutter it's great because you can just um, you know go back and forth and um, and get through it so I have lots of book covers that I'm not going to use for journals um, just because they're too big you know um, like this this book is just it's it's too big for me to use for a journal I could cut it in half and use each half as a journal cover or whatever but um, so I just you know I save these and I use them for tiles and whatever um, even this kind of stuff you know layer this stuff up don't throw it away layer it up glue a few layers together and use this kind of stuff for um for tiles you know and it's sort of you know whatever you are using um, as your base for your tiles um, think about how you're going to be using them ultimately you know that that can sometimes make a big difference like if if you're making them to use as charms or something like that then you probably want them to be a little bit sturdier you know what I mean um, you don't want them to bend and that kind of stuff if you're just gonna make magnets out of them once you get that final coating on them um, that makes them a lot more sturdy too you know just remember that but um, if you're just gonna use them as magnets or as embellishments on your journal covers or on tags or things like that then you know it doesn't matter if they're super super sturdy so um, this is an old album cover that um, I've been saving because I wanted to use some of the imagery off of this. So, anywho, so that's, I mean, I, I found, I pulled out just about everything I had for, um, you know, as far as chipboard. Um, oh, and the other thing is that um, game boards, game boards make great um, chipboard. Cut these up, use these as um, tile bases. So don't throw the game board away just because you wanted the game pieces. Use the board for, you know, journal covers or for tiles or, or whatever. So reuse, upcycle, whatever. Um, so a lot of the time, there's a couple different ways you can approach it. Um, whoops, sorry about that. So, <clears throat> well, here, let me show you this real quick. So I basically have bases, like in all different stages, right? Seeing my tiles the other day, you've been getting stuff ready to make some. Will I be making them today or soon? The tiles? Well, we're going to start on them today. We're going to start on them today. I'm just kind of showing you guys where I'm at and I guess, you know, some different options for things. Um, we're probably not going to complete them today. You know, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to complete tiles today, but... We're going to get started. So, lots of different ways you can start these, right? You can take a whole, like a, a piece of um, chipboard and, um, you know, kind of think about the look that you're going for, okay? Sometimes I find images that I want to use as a background, okay? Like these bingo tile, um, this is Tim Holtz paper, you know? I wanted to use that just as a background for a tile. So I just glued it onto, well, it's actually glued onto a real thin piece of chipboard, and then I have it glued onto a piece of mat board. So it's kind of dimensional already. Um, and then, you know, just, just images that I found that I want to just make that the background um, on some tiles. These um, are just round pieces of mat board that you know I fussy cut out these little clock images from some Tim Holtz paper so I want to use these as these images as my background so I just glued that onto a piece of mat board 
So that's one way you can go. Um, I find images everywhere that, you know, would be great as little backgrounds. These were from some pages in a photo album. A um, little bird and some flowers and, you know, and you could think about making different shapes and different sizes and, um, you know, they don't have to be square. They, they could be round. They can be little rectangles. They can be octagons. They can be just weird mishmash shapes, you know. Um, so I've just got tons of little, um, you know, different types of images. Calendars are a great source of um, small images. Um, to use for tiles. Um, the paper pads, the, like the, um, oh, let's see, where'd they go? One second. Like these, these are, um, this is from the, the cover of a, a paper stack, right? <laughs> so these are like miniatures of the paper that's inside the pad, right? So, you know, I save those, like these little guys, these are, these are great to use for tiles. Um, I don't throw anything away. <laughs> um, anyway, so, I mean, I could just go on and on for hours, but basically, um, you can either start with an image as a background, or you can kind of create your own background. And I think... So what we should do, well, at least the direction I'm going to go is I'm going to create my own background with um, just like scrap paper. And I think that that's a really fun way to do it. And that's a good way to use up um, scraps and um, interesting things that we come across, you know. See, so, yeah, I mean, I just, so I could make... 10 million tiles. So, oh, I also have all these little tiny little um, puzzle pieces that I thought would be great to um, paint and like embellish somehow and um, use in, in tiles. So, <laughs> thanks, Carla. I, I know sometimes I feel like I'm just rambling on, you know, and I don't know. I, I shouldn't do that. But, you know, I think it's important to, to know, like, you can use anything for these things, really. And there's so many different directions that you can take them, you know. Um, if you save any more, you won't be able to get in your art room. <laughs> Scotty, that's funny. I know. Well, I know exactly what you mean. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to show you guys all of these other tiles, but we don't have to go into that. You can see pictures of my tiles um, everywhere, so... Yeah, it is craft and chat. You're right. <laughs> so for you guys, like, you know, it's just kind of a matter of, you know, we're going to probably do at least five to six different like applications on these tiles, you know? So, um, I, I kind of wanted you guys to see what happens when you do different things. Like, um, a lot of these tiles, I will start with a black background. And I just like to do that because I like the way it makes the imagery kind of pop. It kind of pops off of the background, right? I'm trying to find one where I did that. Um, I sort of have a specific look that I'm going for right at the moment. One second. Too many tiles, you guys. Hold on. <laughs> uh, like, these are done just with a postage stamp. You know what I mean? Um... Just postage stamps are so interesting. I just, I mean, I think about the time involved in designing a postage stamp and, you know, somebody drew that, you know what I mean? And it's just like a little miniature piece of artwork and, 
um, it's really cool ephemera, you know, and we've kind of got it like captured and, and we can appreciate it again. You know what I mean? Like it didn't just get thrown away when they got the envelope and threw it away. Like it's still around. And so I think that's cool. Um, I respect stamp collectors so much, like the patience that it takes to, to collect stamps. Okay. I think I'm getting there. I think I'm finding what I'm looking for here in a second. Okay, here we go. This is kind of what I want to go for right now. Like, um, it's just a black background. Okay. And then there's a piece of like book paper layered. Um, and I can't remember if I painted this or if it was black mat board. I think I painted it. So anyway, and then there's a piece of book paper layered there. And then I've got an image um, of some roses. And then I have a fussy cut butterfly that's attached and some words and stuff. And then I think there's this another little piece of, you know, paper from, you know, something on there that has some foil on it. And then I've got some little like flat back pearls and some words. Um, and sometimes I'll add like a little glitter and then it's coated. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. It's like six layers. You know what I mean? So there's a lot that goes into them. Um, and so why not create a million of them all at once? <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes I'll use like a little piece of fabric or whatever. Anyway, I love using, um, micro beads on, on the tiles. Let me see if you guys can see that. I love using the micro beads. Um, I just think they're really cool. Anything in, in miniature, I think is great for tiles. Okay, one second. You're going bowling? Okay. When do you think you guys will be back? Okay. So be sure to get plenty of practice. You're gonna need it. <laughs> okay, guys. Um all right. So I don't even know what the oh, these are just I don't know what to do with these tickets. These are like <clears throat> these are those Tim Holtz. It's the Tim Holtz paper. I don't remember what pack it was in, but it's all those tickets. So I fussy cut them all out and then glued them all onto a piece of chipboard and I don't know. I'll make them into tiles or something at some point. Glue some butterflies and some rhinestones on them and call them art tiles. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, where do I get my ball chain? Well, um... Most of that ball chain I just got at Hobby Lobby on a roll. It comes in a roll and it's like sometimes they have their um like metal stuff. I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but like Hobby Lobby cycles their sales every month. So at least once a month, just about everything um they sell is gonna be 50% off. <laughs> Seriously. Um so at some point, all their metal stuff is going to be half price. And so I buy that ball chain when it's half price. And it comes in a big long roll. I think it's like $14.99. And then they sell it in like a, I think like a, a bronze color and also the silver. And then they sell the little um, connectors too. So that's where I get the ball chain. Um, but, you know, the Tim Holtz ball chain sets are not too bad. Um if you're going to be using as much as I am, you probably want to buy the roll. But um, but I do buy the Tim Holtz ball chain because I like the colors and stuff. So yeah, and I, Scotty, I have thought about getting them on Etsy. I just don't know how I would sell them. Like I I don't. I don't necessarily want to sell them like individually. You know what I mean? I, 
think I would probably go like, um, like an assortment or something. I don't know. I have a block about it, just like I do about all of the greeting cards that I've made. I literally have about 2,000 greeting cards that I've made that they're just sitting in boxes, you know. I'm gonna, I need to start sending them to you guys. <laughs> the art of mat is a great idea. Okay, what's the art of mat? What's the art of mat? I've heard that before. I've heard of an artograph. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> she could put those in the art of mat. Okay. Well, somebody explained to me what an art of mat is. And yes, I could make them in, into paper clips. I could make them into to paper clips. <laughs> okay, Brenda. Some cards. You want me to send you some cards? Because most of my cards are like quotes. Um, they're just like decorative paper and then like a quote. They're 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 all blank. Um they're all like individually packaged in like, you know, sleeves and stuff, like ready to sell. Um, I just have never sold them. I've, you know, I've put them in crackers and stuff, but <clears throat> I've never like aggressively tried to sell my, um, oh, art on mat is a vending machine with artwork. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll look at it. I'll check it out. I definitely will. Oh, an art of mat. That's interesting. Refurbished cigarette machines that sell small pieces of art for five dollars each. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. I need to put somebody in charge of doing that for me. That's what I need. I need somebody to do that for me. I just want to make them. It's hard enough to get my crap together to put stuff on Etsy that I do get on Etsy. Seriously. And my biggest thing about it is descriptions. I hate writing descriptions. I hate it. That's why I'm really grateful for YouTube because I would much rather talk about it than like have to type it out, you know? So anywho, so basically since that's the direction I want to go with my tiles, um, with the black kind of background, and I want to try to let that come through, okay? I don't want to cover up all that black. So what I'm going to do, and, you know, you guys do whatever you want, but this is kind of where I'm going with it. I'm going to use the mat board, the black mat board. And um, the other option is <clears throat> you can cut these down ahead of time into, you know, the sizes that you want to work with, um, the size you want them to ultimately be, or... You can do whatever you're going to do on, you know, your larger piece and then cut it down after you've done some like collaging on it. Um, at this point, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use some pieces that I've already cut down um, because I want to be able to have a little bit more control over what shows up where. Don't judge me, you guys. I have so much crap. Okay. So this is just all... See, these are little tiny tiles that I've already pre-cut. And I think I actually painted this board. But Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. And, of course, this is Mod Podge, so it's a little bit tacky. But, um, okay, you see how there's just like a little piece of paper on there? This is what I'm talking about. This is kind of how these start out. Um, so I definitely, you know, want to leave some, um, negative space. Okay. Like the black, um, I want that to come through. So these are some that I already started. Okay. Oh, well maybe I'll talk to Shannon about it. I'll, I'll send her a message and, or I'll look at some of her videos and, see if she has, she gives information about that. Um, anywho, so I'm not going to work on these, but I just wanted you guys to see what I'm talking about. 
um, these are like, this is where I'm going with this. Um, so I already, so I pre-cut these into the shapes that I want them to ultimately be. And then I just, you know, glued some random paper on them and then I trimmed it off later. So I'm going to work on some of these smaller ones, I guess, because that's what I already have cut out. Oh, I did want to mention, um, I know that I said in the description on the YouTube or the, um, Facebook group that, um, I like to use crackle paste. Okay. I do love me some crackle paste. Um, I know Brenda, that would be super fun. I, I think you should come and visit for a week. Um, so I've made quite a few tiles that started out with crackle paste as a base. Okay. Um, if you've ever used crackle paste on anything, then you kind of know how it behaves. Um, it crackles when it dries. It just, you know, it, it, it cracks into these like kind of spider webby kind of, um, little shapes. Right. And then, and it's white and then you can apply, um, ink or paint or whatever. I like to use something that, um, is somewhat, um, fluid so that it'll sort of like creep into all the little cracks and stuff. This is distress ink on here. Um, this one has like a yellow, um, distress ink. I'm trying to get it so you can actually see it, the color and stuff. So all of these are treated with crackle paste in here. So <clears throat> I, um, I cut these to size before I applied the, um, the crackle paste. Okay. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to cut these after you've done that. Otherwise you run the risk of chipping off all the crackle paste as you're cutting it into pieces, you know? So, um, and this, these were made on, uh, a book cover that I cut up. So, so that's what's in this bag. And at some point I'm going to make these into tiles. So some of the tiles that I've got now are, are, um, are done on the crackle paste. I've not ever done them on the color, like with a colored background. Um, I have a thing about using color sometimes. I don't know. Anyway, so there's that option. But, um, so I don't know if I want to work on something this small with you guys, because I don't think you'll be able to see. So, I think what I'll do is I'll cut some of these up and, um, and I'll work on these. So where's my trimmer? Yeah, the black mat is nice, Scotty. I just, I like the way that it. Um, I just think it makes them look kind of classy, you know, I don't know. I like that. So I'm going to go, um, inch and a half on these. We'll do inch and a half square. Wait, where was I? <laughs> okay. So it's eight and a half. Seven. And rather than using my paper trimmer for every single one of those, I'm just going to eyeball these into squares. It's not like it 
has to be measured, right? I mean, they're just for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious about that Art on Mat thing. Hmm. So what do you do? Do you just like send your stuff to somebody or, I mean, do you set up a, uh, a vending machine? Like would I like set up a vending machine like here in my town and then just like check it every once in a while? Um, Nairobi, this is actually mat board that I'm cutting. This is mat board. It's black, um, mat board that I got it. I got it at an art supply store here in Spokane because they sell the, like when they frame something, so this one obviously is not the black core, but um, when they frame a piece of artwork, the centers that they cut out, they sell them. So this one was 75 cents. So, yeah. But the nice thing about mat board is that it's very sturdy. Yeah, it's real, it's real sturdy. Something about the way they make it, you know, they, they press it. It's like, um, a lot more sturdy than just a regular chipboard. You can use chipboard. I'm just using this, you know, chipboard is great. This is what I'm using though, because I like it. And I like that it's black all the way through. You know, if you don't like, if you don't have something like this, but you want it to be black all the way through, then, you know, you just got to paint the edges. You got to paint the edges black or whatever. Um, they look really great on like a metallic background too. If you, uh, okay, Laura, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but these look really great with like, um, some kind of metallic paint as your background too. Just like a solid color of bronze or gold or uh, metallic purple or you know, whatever. And cutting them up ahead of time is a nice way to have, maybe you want to do some in different colors and stuff, you know. And everybody does art tiles differently. You know, I've watched lots of videos of, you know, people making art tiles and, um, you know, I've just kind of decided like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And, you know, apparently, like, there's some, like, specific way you're supposed to do it or whatever. But I think, uh, I think you can just do whatever you want, honestly. <clears throat> so, yeah, so I start out with these little squares. And I think that's a good quantity to kind of start with for, for our project. Um, this is not... Uh, tacky glue and is not matte mod podge either. It's actually glossy matte or glossy mod podge <laughs> mixed with matte mod podge. And um, I can't get the lid off. So, anyway, so this is what I'm using for my glue. Um, as far as, you know, stuff that. I want to put on here. You guys know, like I've got tons of options. So these little miniature, these little miniature books are so awesome. I love that the text is so tiny, you know. So I'm gonna make a little pile of stuff that I want to use. I definitely want to use part of that envelope. And. I really like the border on this certificate, so I'm going to use some of that. I like these numbers. Um, I thought some of this pattern would be cool, a pattern tissue. Um, this is like an old almanac. I want to use some of the numbers and stuff off of there. I'm sort of over the French dictionary thing. Um, I like that stuff and that stuff. This is just old paper. This is from an old notebook. I've been loving that. Um, 
I like this handwriting. Some of that handwriting. I love the, I don't know. They just used to care about how they, they used to care about their penmanship, right? Nobody cares about penmanship anymore. Except for Steven. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days, I'm gonna, I'll show you guys. He has beautiful handwriting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here's some onion skin paper that, um, from 1965 with some typing on it. I'm going to use some of that. And then I want to get some of the postage off of some of these envelopes. And of course I have a gazillion, um, you know, actual postage stamps too. So, you know what I love? Look at these little envelopes. I love these little envelopes. These were, um, love letters in these, you guys, seriously. They're so cute. Look at these little tiny envelopes. And he wrote her pretty regularly. I have, I have the letters that were in them, see? Yeah. Sunday evening, January 11th, 1863. Dear Charlotte, you know, oh my God, they're just yummy. And they were folded up in these little envelopes, see? I wish I knew Charlotte. Oh, I'm sure Charlotte's dead now, but <laughs> anywho. So that stuff I want to use a little bit of, and then, oh my goodness, I have this bag with, I know those, stamp, those stamps, huh, Brenda? Yeah, you can buy onion skin paper. Uh, they don't manufacture it anymore, though, Diana. Um, <clears throat> as far as I know, I mean, somebody might, but this is actually some old onion skin paper. Um, a lot of times they, they don't label it as onion skin paper, um, but if you search for vintage typing paper, sometimes you can find it. Um, and a lot of the time in the description, they'll tell you whether it's onion skin or not. Um, this is like a student grade or a campus grade that they call it. So it's really, really, really thin. And if it's onion skin, a lot of times it'll have a watermark in the paper. But since this is like a student grade, I don't think it's got the watermark in it. Um, this is actually not onion skin, but it's like a parchment paper. Um, and I really like it. I like the way that it, it coffee dyes. Thanks, Rona. <laughs> I have too much stuff. Anywho, so this is some onion skin paper that I coffee dyed last night. And I left it in the oven way too long. So I forgot about it. And, you know, I had the oven a little too hot. I was being impatient. But that's okay because it's still yummy, right? Oh, it smells really good. <laughs> it does not smell very good. Anyway, so that, I want to use some of that. And then this is just my bag of scraps. So I'm going to use some of this stuff too. But first, I'm going to use some of this. Oh, and then, of course, there's this book, which I definitely wanted to use some of this book. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the, uh, this is, uh, like a machinist guide. 
So there's all kinds of really cool pictures of gears and stuff in here. Your, your used coffee filters. Nice, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are great for background. And they're a really cool texture. I know. Crunchy paper, huh, Scotty? <laughs> it's great. I love it. Um, yeah, so tell me some other stuff you guys are using. I'm curious to know what you guys gathered up. And if you're not making these tiles along with me, you know, what, what are you guys working on? You know, maybe you're not making tiles. Maybe you're just hanging out, but I'm curious. <gasps> Look at that. Isn't that a cool picture? I love that. Some of these numbers. I love these like equations and stuff. They're just so I am hoping to get up north again to the junk store, the junk shop thrift store that uh, my mom and I like to go to I'm thinking about kidnapping Steven one day and driving up to look at that fire hydrant look at that isn't that the coolest drawing look at it it's so cool oh, I love that picture um anyway because it's so pretty, the driving out, the driving in the drive up there is so pretty. Okay, and so you're you're getting ready to do tiles later on. Nice, isn't it great that YouTube just automatically uploads the um the live stream as a recording? I love that. I'm saving this for something else. I just I love it. And then I've got all this really super old. Um, like really fragile um, ephemera that would be great for tiles. So anyway, and then I just tear it, you know, I just tear it into little little pieces. Look at look at the little greyhound bus. And these little like timetables and stuff. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that yummy? Oh, I just love it. I love it. Love, love, love it. I almost don't want to tear it up, but I'm gonna. I definitely want to use that little guy. And then I like how this little part of this is so yellowed and this is like a treasure this this piece of uh, this bus schedule that's going with the fire hydrant too Let's see what year was this this is a newer ticket 2002 and of course you know there's all the stuff from the cluster tray you know um, all that stuff is, is usable. You're making charms and a tassel with your sister. Nice. What kind of charms? I don't really know what this is. It's in some other language, but 
I really like it. <laughs> so. Nineteen thirty-eight calendar. Well, I might as well use some of that page. Have a pizza box that you painted over and have it ready to cut into tiles. But tiles are new to me, and I don't know what to do now. So I'll make them with you. Okay. Nice, Laura. Yeah. A pizza box is great. Um, you know, you can use core guided cardboard. It's, you know, ultimately it, it really just depends on what you're going to do with your tiles when you're done. You know, um, I know that sometimes people don't like to use corrugated cardboard because it, you know, it has that air factor inside and they're not maybe as sturdy, but you know what, if you coated it on the front and the back, it's going to be just as sturdy as any other tile. Seriously. So, yeah, so that's awesome. Um, these are those ration booklets. So, yeah, I think I've got enough stuff pulled out um, now. And like I said, there's no right way to do this. There's no wrong way to do this. You can do whatever you want. Like, it, and you can't mess them up. They're, it's impossible. It's impossible to mess them up because if you do something you don't like, just paint over it. You know, just paint right over it. It, it doesn't even matter. So... Anyway, so I'm just going to take my little pile of stuff here. My hands are going to get covered with glue, but that's okay. So basically what I'll do is I'll just take a few, kind of set them out here, and I'll just put a little dot of glue on each one. Um, I do like to have some kind of a, like a card, you know. One second. <clears throat> your sister lives two and a half hours away I can't wait for her to retire and play with me again nice <laughs> I know won't that be fun I'm saying I'm retired I'm just going to say I'm retired now I'm 48 and uh 48 and a half <laughs> and I'm thinking okay I'm just going to say I'm retired for now. Hi, Myrna. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you came. So like I said, you guys, this, um, and this Mod Podge is actually watered down just a tiny bit too. It had gotten pretty thick in that bottle. So I added a little bit of water to it. I'm going to use a little bit more of this calendar. So fragile. Look at it. It's just disintegrating. Some of this guy. So when we get something on these, you know, we can um, go back, you know, let these dry and then I'll trim off the excess, you know. So I don't even care, like, if it's hanging over the side. It doesn't matter. Whoops. Oh, that's all right. I didn't know that was two layers of paper. It's okay. 
and sometimes I'll use a couple different things on there on my background. I might layer um, a couple of couple pieces together. But I'm trying to at least save a little bit of that black background um, just because I really like the way it, it comes through. You know. And that just kind of gets lost, so I'm not going to use that. But I'm going to use a little piece of this Greyhound ticket there. And the thing about tiles that is kind of interesting is that, like, well, this is kind of the way I look at it. Um, they're just little teeny pieces of pieces of art, right? Little tiny pieces of art that, um, in all of those layers, like, you have to really take your time and kind of look at it to actually see all of the layers that are there. Um, I mean, you don't have to make them super layered or, or anything. I mean, you can make them extremely simple, like I did just with a postage stamp. You know what I mean? Um, but that's what I think is fun about the tiles is that, um, you know, you can just discover new things in them. You know, they're not as they appear initially, usually. Like, there's something deeper if you look, you know. So whatever I'm not using, I'm just, you know, if I have these little tiny scraps like that, they're just going in that bag. And then um, at some point, I'll do just like a big collage on, you know, um, on a piece of chipboard or something and um, use up a whole bunch of that stuff and just layer it, layer it, layer it. So, you know, it's more s solid. For now, I'm just kind of choosing little pieces that I want to use on these. I really love these images of the, like the machinery, you know. And you do want to make sure that you're kind of getting all the air bubbles out. Um, otherwise, you're going to be fighting those air bubbles um, constantly. So, And I'm not necessarily trying to um, coat the top of the, you know, image with glue. I'm not really concerned about that at this point. That's not what I'm doing. I'm I'm mainly just trying to make sure that what I'm attaching is is actually, you know, flat and there's no air bubbles in there. That's why I'm using the card. My goal is not to, you know cover the top of that image. I just want those numbers. And these numbers. <laughs> I haven't made tiles for a long time, you guys. <laughs> it's been a while. Maybe even a year. It's, it's been quite a while. 
because I made so many of them. Like that's all I did literally for like four months. I just made tiles. I want to get a little bit of this gear. So, you know, after these dry and I come back and I trim them up and that kind of thing, I'm going to add some kind of, um, like, image or something to it. And most likely about 90% of that is going to get covered up. And that's fine. Like, that's totally fine. Um, the goal is just like in like my clusters, you know, the goal is to just have the idea of that, um, that image there, you know, I mean, you know, we may only be able to see just the very corner of this gear when it's all said and done, or maybe none of it. I don't know. You know, it depends, depends on, you know, what I wind up doing. You know, sometimes when I just get going, it's like, um, I just, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's my son's Costco card. <laughs> His old Costco card. There's Conrad. <laughs> <clears throat> I do love the imagery of the gears, though. Hi, Trish. Good morning. You made bullet jewelry for about three months, Scotty? What, you mean like jewelry out of bullets? That sounds dangerous. I want to see bullet jewelry. Yeah, I'm loving these gears. All right, that's enough gears. The shells. Oh, I bet they sound cool, like clinking together and stuff. Whoops. Oh, someone's address. 424 Atlantic, Atlantic Street in Stamford, Connecticut. It's a really old letter. I mean, I'm sure that address probably still exists, but oh well. Whoops, I just ripped that stamp. Scotty, do you sell the, the bullet jewelry or I'm just curious? I know, watch the stamp. Yeah, yeah, Brenda, I have so many stamps. I have to send you some stamps. Thousands of them. You know, you can buy them on eBay. You can buy postage stamps, used postage stamps on eBay. Pretty cheap. 
um, the ones that are on paper are a lot cheaper. Um, so like they're still attached to the envelope, you know, and I have a ton of, um, Christmas ones. These are all Christmas stamps that I've pulled out as I'm using my stamps. I'm just putting all the Christmas ones in there. See, there's a whole bunch of them. So I'm just sticking them up there. But yeah, so if you if you uh, look on eBay for um, you know on paper old postage stamps, search search that up, and um, you'll you'll be able to find tons of them. I think this lady sold me a thousand um, postage stamps for two ninety nine. Just saying. Brenda wants stamps. I keep looking for stamps and papers like you got and can't find any. Where are you looking, Brenda? You mean on eBay? Is that where you're looking? Oh, you sold them all, Scotty? Okay. No, well, that, yeah, that would be cool. I'd like to see them. I think it's neat to, you know, turn something like that into um, something beautiful, you know? <laughs> Brenda, you're so funny. <laughs> not, okay, yeah, maybe you're not putting in the correct search words. Okay, so... I'll help you. I will, I'll go on eBay later on and I'll try to find the girl that I bought the stamps from. And you know, these aren't like all super old vintage postage stamps, you know, they're, they're those ones. Um, but, uh, I mean, they're old, they're, they're not super recent, but yeah, I bet she does, Carla. I have a feeling about Scotty. I haven't seen a lot of your guys' work, and um, it would be awesome. Share whatever you want in our Facebook group. You know what I mean? Like, it's not all about, obviously, like, it's not all about junk journals. It's it's the connections between junk journals and all of the things that we do. I really, I mean that. Like, I want you guys to share all of the things that you do and you know the things that you make and your processes and your videos and all of that kind of stuff cuz it's all related you know i mean i don't always make junk journals i do lots of other stuff i really do so Yeah, so you need to be looking in the right place, Brenda, and I'll I'll help you find her, okay? And and I mean, I'll see what if I can find them and then I'll I'll let you know what keywords I used. Can you guys hear Stephen crunching on the bacon? <laughs> you make jewelry too. Key jewelry. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Scotty, I have a ton of old keys. Um, if you need some keys, I don't know if you're still doing that, but, um, but I do have a bunch of old keys. I was doing like, um, like assemblages on keys. Um, yeah, I want to see those. So my mom is doing, my mom hasn't made any for quite a while. And I'm actually trying to help my mom get her Etsy shop set up. She's going on a little vacation, a um, little, little road trip. And um, when she comes back, I'm going to help her get her um, Etsy shop set up. She, uh, she does assemblage um, jewelry, like metal um, jewelry. And, um, I showed you guys some of her jewelry last, I think it was last week. And, um, and she also does some really beautiful, um, lamps. Like she repurposes lamps or not repurposes lamps. She basically revives old lamps that she finds. And, um, 
yeah, puts her, puts her, her touch on them. She does the, like the shades and stuff. She'll decoupage, um, the shades and she uses just beautiful papers that she finds all over. And, um, my mom really loves, um, like decoupage and paper mache and that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> You're good with key supplies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do use them on my journals sometimes. Um, I kind of covet them though, I guess. Like maybe that's, yeah. <laughs> Us rap artists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I get it from my mom. My um, drive to create and, and that kind of thing. My dad was kind of an artist too, though, you know, he, he, um, my dad was an interior designer and, um, he had a, um, a degree from the Chicago Institute of Art and, um, he passed in 1996. Um, but he had quite a knack for putting together, um, different patterns. Like he could, um, he could combine like paisleys and plaids, like nobody's business. Just saying my dad was, um, was pretty amazing when he combining different, um, different patterns. Yeah, I'll use them. You're right, Scotty. I need to use them. <laughs> I found a bunch of keys at this, this shop in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And they were selling them for a quarter a piece, all these keys, you know. So I stood there for like literally probably an hour just looking through all of their keys. Thanks, Corrine. Yeah, my dad was a good guy. It was kind of funny when I was a kid, you know. Um, I live with my mom uh, for the most part, but. <clears throat> when I was about 15, I moved in with my dad and, um, and, uh, so he worked, um, we lived in Denver for a while and, um, so he worked f through this, um, like furniture gallery in Denver and a lot of his, um, you know, clients, um, found him through this furniture gallery anyway um so really high-end furniture you know like at one point well so what he used to do is um since he basically was uh you know in charge of maintaining the inventory for the gallery he could take things out of stock temporarily <laughs> and then put them back into stock and so sometimes we would have like a sofa in our house that was priced at like $30,000, stuff like that. Like, so kind of crazy. Um, so my friends, you know, anybody who didn't know me exceptionally well, but like coming to our house for the first time, they always thought we were like rich, you know, we weren't. My dad was just good at covering his ass anyway. So that's about the end of that first kind of, that first step, you know, um, and I'll let these dry. Just putting all this stuff back in this bag, I guess. I'll just keep it all in here. My life is organized in Ziploc bags. <clears throat> Hi, Pauline. Um, the black base, <laughs> the black base is, um, it's mat board. <clears throat> yes, I was rich. I was definitely loved. My dad was a really good guy. He was awesome. Um, it's mat board, Pauline. Just one option for, for tiles. Um, I like using the mat board because it's really sturdy and, um, it's actually pretty easy to cut and, um, 
I especially like this black because it's it's black core, so it's uh, yeah, so it's black all the way through. So if I don't feel like painting the edges of the tiles, I don't have to. Yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't use any of this stuff, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I got to keep this in something, otherwise it's going to crumble everywhere. So much paper. Yeah, mine are a mess too. <laughs> I know. I love that sound too, Care. I do. Um, yeah. My fingers are a mess. So... Let's see. These probably are not going to be dry. So I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to set them aside on something. I'm just going to plop them on here. And then I think what I might do is just pull out some of those other ones that are kind of already at this stage and um, look at some other stuff kind of like you know the next um, like step or layer so you can also if if you like the look of it like you could take a little bit of gesso and just kind of scrape it across these two and maybe I'll do that on some of these other um, tiles Um, I'll let those dry. So I'm going to pull out some of these larger ones that are basically at that same stage. And I think I am going to use a little bit of gesso on these. Did I make enough? <laughs> All right, let me find my gesso. move some of this stuff. All right, I'm done with this Mod Podge for now. Oh my gosh, I just have things like stacked up around me, you guys. All right. So part of the idea in, you know, at applying like a layer of gesso on here is to kind of push back the images that are here, okay? Because <clears throat> we want each layer to kind of stand on its own, all right? So we don't necessarily want this layer um, to come to the foreground, right? We want to push it back so that um, so it's not so dominant, okay? Um, so that's that's kind of the whole idea in applying a thin layer of gesso is that it's gonna it's gonna sort of mute this layer a little bit. It's gonna tone it down. Um, you'll still be able to see it because if you do a thin layer of gesso, it will dry somewhat uh, transparent. Okay, um, you've got to do it, you know, in a thin layer, but. Um, but that's the basic idea of applying um, gesso on, you know, something like this. Um, 
and you know then you can go whatever direction you want on top of the gesso you could um, spray some ink or you could um, you know paint on it or um, you can sand it down too like if you get it a little bit too thick you can sand it down or you can you know distress it um, you can distress these tiles too you know you can um, mess up the edges of them and um, you can do whatever you want <laughs> but there's a lot of different different ways to approach these um, but that's kind of so these these were glued the the little scraps were glued on with um, Mod Podge and that's why they're I'm kind of having to pop them apart so I'm just sort of separating them all and putting them all in the direction I want them to be Oh, you posted some keys, Scotty? Nice. Okay, I would definitely want to see those. Um, so for gesso, this... Ugh, um, I'm going to use a palette knife. So basically with the gesso, I'm just scraping across the image just a little bit, right? Like I'm not um, completely covering it because I still want the idea of my of that background imagery to be there, you know? So I'm just so I'm kind of like smushing it on there, <laughs> smashing it on there, and then I'm like scraping it off. Um, you know, another thing you can do on this uh, this layer before before you know without using like um torn paper or whatever um tape like uh washi tape even just plain masking tape looks kind of cool as a you know like a first layer and if you get a little bit more than you really want on there just wipe it off right And gesso actually dries pretty fast, so um, I'm going to do some of these, and then uh, I think we can probably manage one more step. just piling them up here on my desk um the gesso layer like I don't it doesn't really bother me if they kind of stack on top of each other because they really won't stick together that much so I don't really care I just kind of toss them over here it's such a thin layer of gesso that you know it really won't they really won't stick to each other E6000 does stink. So does Mod Podge. I don't know. I don't like the smell of Mod Podge. I do like the smell of this gesso, though. You know what else really stinks is that um, crackle paste. It does not smell pleasant. It's almost a sour kind of smell, or I don't know. But you see how this is kind of... You can see the, the images there, but you know, we've kind of pushed them to the background a little bit, you know, except for like that one little spot there. Um, yeah. So, and as that dries, it, it'll be even a little bit more transparent.
I used a lot of um, pages from uh, like an algebra book on these. See, I mean, I've used a teeny tiny bit of, of gesso and it's, it, you know, I've done like 20 tiles. So then, you know, you could come back in on these and like um, layers, like some tissue paper or napkins, um, paper napkins, you know, um, I got something in my gesso there. I don't know what it is. And this is the heavy gesso, you guys. This is the su actually the super heavy gesso. I just really like it because, yes, I'm using white gesso. Laura. <laughs> and all an algebra page in most of my junk journals. I love them too, care. I loved algebra books and trigonometry. Yeah. Um, yes, this is white gesso and this is the super heavy. Um, so it's, you know, it's very, very, very thick and it dries really fast. I didn't want to cover her whole face. There. <laughs> yeah, there's like... Oh, yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you have some, Laura. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I didn't put gesso in the supply list, did I? Sorry, guys. I forgot about the gesso. Well, yeah, see, I just can't do anything in moderation, it seems like, you know, it's like, I just have to make a million of everything. So anyway, what I was going to say is, um, you could layer all kinds of stuff on top of this, you know, on this layer, on top of the gesso layer, right? Uh, paper napkins. Um, like maybe some doilies or, um, some of that burned, um, onion skin paper, maybe, um, any kind of pattern tissue. You could even do like some of the Tim Holtz makes that like thin, uh, washi tissue tape, you know, um, paper dried flowers, you know, cause dried flowers are very trans transparent. Um, you could use something kind of transparent, I guess is what I'm trying to say, or textural. Like I've got these, um, like the, um, paper lace, um, that you can get at, at Michael's, you know, it's like those, I'll show you here in a second, but, um, it's, it's basically like paper that has, um, sort of cut out like a stencil, you know, you're thinking, take the big 
piece of black mat, cover it with old text pages, then gesso over it, then cut into tiles. Have you ever tried it like that? Yes, I have, Scotty. Yeah, I do that a lot, um, as a matter of fact. And there's a couple of reasons that I do, did I do that or don't do that. And the reason that I did not do that with this is because I'm trying to preserve the black. So I was trying to keep myself contained into saving part of the black on these. That's why I did not do that. But yes, that is um, that is a good way of doing it. And that's probably what I'm going to wind up doing with that bag full of stuff. Um, I will just, you know, um, collage a bunch of that stuff together. Yeah. It does seem like that would be a lot easier, doesn't it? <laughs> but I just don't get the same effect. <clears throat> I like to use um, two different types of book pages. Like, see how the one on this side is a lot lighter color than that side? I like to do that and kind of contrast them together. Pages from a couple different books. <laughs> yeah, it's easy with your fingers, but... I've actually done quite a few tiles that way where I've just, you know, created a whole board of, you know, um, collage and then um, cut it into pieces. It's easier to cut before you get all those layers on there too. Your background comes from teaching and having so many at once. Uh, <laughs> like people learning at so many people learning at once you mean or um, or trying to accomplish so much at once I had a feeling about you by the way that you had that kind of background I always wanted to teach art. Always, always. That or art history. Wow, you taught in the classroom for 34 years. That's awesome. Like general education, Scotty, or, or art? I'm sure you did teach art. What did you teach? Tell us about that. See, now you guys got me started on all these. I'm almost done. <laughs> almost done with these. Really? Grades one, 1 through 11 in almost all content. You taught art and literacy for nine years in Washington State. We're in Washington, Scotty. I'm in Spokane. I'm just curious. I've lived in Spokane for 29 years now. Earth Science and Sign Language in Montana? Right on. I always love the idea of teaching sign language to every single child on the planet. And that way... 
um, everybody would be able to talk to each other. Regardless of, you know, your language. Sort of. Like, basically, you know? All right, so... You lived in Bellingham. Okay. Your brother-in-law was a high school principal in Spokane for many years. Nice care. What? I wonder what uh, school. Do you know what school he was principal at? My neighbor, um, he's in his late seventies, maybe even early eighties. He used to be a high school principal too. He's the, uh, we call him, well, I call him the dandelion, um, police. Don't have dandelions in your yard or he'll come after you. <laughs> anyway. Central Valley. Okay. Yeah. I know where that is. Hmm. You loved living in Bellingham. My son, um, Scotty, my son, my second son, um, he graduated from Western, um, about five years ago, four or five years ago. Yeah. He majored in, uh, studio design in at Western. Um, he went to school there actually on a, a football scholarship. Actually, that maybe that wasn't his major. I can't remember. I think it was though. Anyway, um, yeah, he went to school on a football scholarship, so it was really cool. And he worked in, um, lived in Seattle and worked for Microsoft for a couple of years. Um, yeah, he loved it. Uh, he worked. He was like on the Xbox like project for a while, and um. Now he's actually in Oakland, but, um, you got your master's there. Nice. Yeah. He, I am encouraging him to, um, to do that. I just feel like, you know, he's still young enough that I think he might actually have the, the stamina to, to do that and finish. But anyway, he's a, he's a, I guess his official title is a stu a staff designer for some company in, in Oakland now. I don't know what it, what exactly it is, but they design uh, web apps or um, and, and apps like phone apps and stuff. So. <laughs> so with these, um, I kind of want to let these dry, you know, um, before I do anything more to them. Um, and they'll dry sort of piled up on top of each other. They, they don't necessarily have to be, um, you know, spread out perfectly, but, um, you know, my next set, well, let me pick out a few here that are basically dry. Some of those first ones. So I've got a little pile that are dry. Push these back over here again. Yeah, your your 30s is a great time for sure. I remember my 30s. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what I was talking about. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you're inspired, Scotty. That's cool. That's uh that's always a good thing. Was it texture paste, Clara? Hi, Clara. I don't think I said hi to you. Um, it is gesso. It's just like a super heavy white gesso that I was using. So when I say paper lace, this is what I'm talking about. This stuff. Um, you know, they sell it at Michaels and pads, um, in different colors and, um, and different designs and stuff like that. So 
Um, I use these a lot in my tiles. And like the smaller um, like doilies, you know, just, just mainly for the texture. So I try to find some that I've already uh, torn up. I use these on my book covers too. These are some old um, cutouts from my, excuse me, I made some like stencils on my scan and cut, so that's what these are. Here we go. So here's a couple of those that I think I painted. Yeah. So you can paint that um, paper lace. This is actually done with uh, Inca Gold. And let me pull out one of these silver doilies. I'm really attracted to like metallics and you know stuff like that. I I love um, metallic paints and like ink and gold and um, things like that. So I will um, you know take some little pieces of this and just kind of um, layer those on top of the gesso. Um, where's my Oh, here it is. So on some of these, you know, if I want to kind of bring this, bring this background back up a little bit, I can kind of sand some of that gesso off, right? Like the gesso is a little bit thick on this one for me. So I'm just kind of sanding some of that gesso off. And that just adds a little layer of like distress to it too. Like you can kind of see how it's distressing the edge of that paper right there. Make it not look, you know, make it look like it's not quite so painted. You know what I mean? Kind of like knocking the rough edges off of the gesso also. So we kind of pushed it back using the gesso and now I'm just kind of bringing it back up a little bit just to, um, just to make sure it doesn't get lost basically. Like I want us to still be able to see, um, you know, some of those words coming through, some of the music notes and some of the imagery. I want that to still be present, you know. Yeah, shiny things, huh, Scotty? I know. All things shiny and glittery. So now you guys got me started on tiles again. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. <clears throat> All right. I'm not going to get into tissue, but um, just because I don't feel like dealing with it right now. But so for this little group... Um, I'm just going to, you know, use um, pieces of, of this uh, paper lace. Um, and this is tacky glue in a bottle. <laughs> I actually um, had to water it down just a tiny bit. It started getting a little bit dry in that bottle, so... So I'm just basically adding some texture. It's <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
That's funny, Carrie. It's Laura. Uncle Jamie is Laura. <laughs> you bad girls. So, the other thing we can do, like, kind of tone down the gesso just a tiny bit, is we can ink it just, just a tad. You know what I mean? Um, just add a little bit of ink to it, and that will actually bring out some of the texture of the gesso at the same time. Forgot to mention that. I do like to do that sometimes. So this is basically what I will do now um, with all of those tiles. I'm going to either add some, you know, some of this paper lace that I have um, inked, some, a little bit of a layer of maybe um, a doily. I might pull out some tissue and do that kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure. But at this point, we're still trying to keep this sort of transparent, right? We're just building up some layers that are going to add like background interest and depth to the tile. Okay, so right now we're not really even worried about um, any kind of like focal point or anything on these. Um, that'll kind of come later. We're just trying to build like um, an interesting background, basically you know, you could use dried flowers. I think dried flowers would be a great idea. Um, we want to just try to keep it at this point to something that is somewhat transparent or translucent or, you know, that you can see through so that we're going to, you know, we're just building layers. That's the thing about art tiles is just layering. And, um, to, to, and that's just my opinion, you know, I mean, you don't have to do that. You can just, you know, glue a piece of something onto a paper and, coat it and call it an art tile, you know, because it is. But this is, you know, this is the way I do them. So anyway, um, but I'm going to go ahead and thank you. I like this inker too, Regina. <laughs> My son made it for me on his lathe. Um, want to get him to make me a few more, but yeah, it's nice. And then I just put, you know, a um, makeup sponge on there. So um, so that kind of gets you guys started, I guess, on tiles. Um, and um, I'll go ahead and keep all my stuff out. And then I will, um, on Wednesday, hopefully I'll be able to stream. <laughs> Last Wednesday, I couldn't get it to work. Steven and I looked at it for quite a while. And um, and then we just decided, well, it's saying it's going to reset at midnight. So we just waited and, and it did. So, um, anyway, so I will continue working on these. You guys keep working on your tiles. If you're, you know, if you're doing them, keep doing that. And, uh, I'll post some pictures of, um, kind of where I'm at and, um, I'll do the other ones. Like when these dry, I'll trim them and I'll just sew them. And then, uh, I'll, I'll do like my next step on them as well. And I'll post some pictures of where I'm at. And then um, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, <laughs> you don't have to wait, Brenda. <laughs> so what I was going to say is on Wednesday, if you guys want, we could kind of do like the next part of this. You know what I mean? Um, I think I think that would be kind of a good way to, to go about this. Give you guys a couple days to maybe, and then, oh, and I'll post in the group, I'll kind of post like a supply list for Wednesday, like stuff that we might need on Wednesday, okay? And, um, because I think that a week, if we do like three sessions, I think that would be enough to basically get us to, to where we've got completed tiles, you know what I mean? So, um, I'll try to make sure I stay on top of it and, um, get you guys, get you guys through it. <laughs> You're welcome, Anne. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. 
Oh, thanks, Brenda. You're a sweetheart. You guys are awesome. And I just want to tell you guys thank you. You know, I appreciate it a lot. Your um your kindness and your your sweet words and, and all that. It really does mean a lot to me. Really. So all right. Well listen, I will keep in touch um on uh on Facebook. So if you've not joined our Facebook group, um make sure you do because that's where I'm going to kind of update when my live streams are and that kind of stuff. Um, Laura, I know that you're not on Facebook, so I will keep in touch with you um, individually because, you know, you're special. So, <laughs> and so are you, Brenda. And, and, and so are you, Carla. I really appreciate you guys modding for me today. All right. You guys take care. Okay. All right, Laura, you, <laughs> you're welcome. I love you guys. Bye for now. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> I'm I'm going to go back and read the chat after this uploads. I'm interested to see what it if it really works. So, okay. Bye you guys. Love you.